welcome to the Wardenberg Family Farm with Don and Brenda. Well, if you watch our first video from when we first bought this farm two and a half years ago, we had a lot of dreams. One of the dreams was to grow our own food and preserve at least most of it. Well, come and join us to see how we've done so far. One of the first things I wanted to do was get chickens so I could have fresh eggs every morning and voila. <laughs> we now have like 34 chickens and we get fresh eggs every day. They haven't been laying as much over the short days of the winter, but now they're starting to pick up. And some of them are overachievers. <laughs> I have two that lay humongous eggs. So, if you see, I'm actually starting the garden for next year. This is the first seeds for the year. And then over here's the pantry. Remember, we did a pantry makeover. It still looks pretty good. And this has just the stuff we're going to use pretty soon. I keep like, you know, one of everything or just, you know, things I know I'm going to use pretty soon. But it stayed pretty neat, you know, neat enough anyway. And then comes the fun part. I love our basement. I know not everybody likes old stone basements. I love old basements. And I have it set up so that I have things I need on the stairs. All my cookbooks, stuff for sourdough bread, and then I have baskets. So if I'm going down to get some canned goods, I take a basket along with me and just get what I want and bring it up. And I always have the basket with my used canning jars they take back down when they're empty. So join me in the basement. You see we're passing our little wine rack, which hopefully someday might be in the root cellar. But for now, this is our wine rack. And then we can start with just stuff that's store-bought. This is the stuff I didn't make yet. So I always have some things on hand that I have bought from the store. And well, there'll be less and less of that as the years go by. But then here's some of the stuff I've canned. And I, before living on this farm, had never canned. But it's fun. <laughs> and it's such a thrill to come down and see all this food that we grew, that we preserved for our family. And it's not just for us. Our kids help with this and our kids get some of this too. So it's kind of exciting. All the different pickles. A friend of mine, Joyce, is an expert at pickles. And this particular recipe, they're a sweet pickle. They are just the best pickle I've ever had in my life. So as you can see, it's January. We only have two jars left. So next year, I'll be making a lot more of those. And there's a bunch of relish and um, pizza sauce salsa, which turned out pretty good. That's the first time I did that. Some bruschetta, flavored Italian sauce, regular tomato sauce, barbecue sauce that's spicy, barbecue sauce that's not spicy, and then a lot of ketchup. Um, and I also tried French onion soup. We haven't had any of that yet. We need to have some of that soon to try it out. But I thought that'd be nice on some cold winter day. Just get out a jar of soup, throw the bread on top and the cheese, and have instant you know, onion soup. And then we did sweet potatoes, herbed potatoes, honey, carrots, pickled beets, and regular beets. So that's kind of the vegetable area. Except for the drying rack. Donnie bought me this beautiful drying rack for drying things, and it's been perfect for hanging onions and garlic. I might have gone a little overboard with garlic. <laughs> we have enough garlic to last us for a while. But it, this drying rack worked great. I let them cure outside, and then brought them in and hung them up, and they've been great. So you decided not to tie the onions? No. I started on my first thing, tying them all individually. <clears throat> it's a pain in the butt. <laughs> <laughs> so, the rest are in bags of like six or seven. That sounds easier. It's much easier. Yeah, that was, that was not good. Now, this is a fun shelf. I like this shelf. This is the jam, syrup, applesauce, kind of a sweet area. And did some different things. I tried a caramel apple jam, which it's okay. It's super sweet. My grandkids like it. But I'll make that again, too. But, um... This is apple syrup, which is really good. It has chunks of apple in it. And I'll make that again. For what, pancakes? No, pancakes, um, waffles, anything. But there's something I'm gonna make a lot more of next year. This empty space right here had blackberry syrup. Oh, blackberry syrup on sourdough waffles. If you haven't tried it, you have to. I only made three jars and we're down to our last jar. <laughs> so next year I'm gonna be making blackberry syrup black raspberry syrup, red raspberry syrup, blueberry syrup. Those fruit syrups are delicious and great way to use the fruit. So we also have some uh, strawberry butter, 
last jar of orange marmalade. Of course, we didn't grow the oranges in Pennsylvania. And then apple butter, um, strawberry jam, lots of strawberry jam, some strawberry rhubarb jam, and a plethora of applesauce and apple pie filling. Our apple trees are not producing enough to have our own apples yet. They're dwarf trees and this will be their third year. But a friend of ours has a lot of apple trees. She had more apples than she could handle, so she allowed us to take some off her hands. And I made everything you can imagine with apples. Cool. So, I, I like this. This, this is fun. <laughs> How about your shelves that I made you? Are they uh, holding and, up? And they work perfectly. And we, we really could have done this like six or eight weeks ago because we've used a lot of the food already. There wasn't that many empty jars until I was done canning, but you can see how many there are already. So as they get empty, they go back on this shelf, ready for next year. Cool. Yeah, it's all worked out really well. Awesome. So do you think we're preppers yet? I don't know. What do you guys think? We're trying to decide are we preppers, homesteaders. We're kind of heading toward preppers, I think. <laughs> Okay, now that we're showing you around the larder, I just wanted to remind you that the larder with its limestone walls is at the basement level. Lower than the basement, as a reminder, we do have the root cellar here. And I wanted to thank our viewers. We did a video on the root cellar, and we got a lot of good suggestions. One of them was this iron post that came out of the wall. We weren't sure what that was for, and it was, one of our viewers said that they probably hung a lantern. So. I think they're right, so we uh, put a lantern there. I think it makes it authentic. The other is the hole in the wall. We didn't know what that was for. And we've had a couple viewers respond to say that typically when fresh vegetables came in from the garden, they would put them in a crock or container, put them in the wall here to get acclimated to the temperature and the humidity before they put them down in the root cellar. Regarding the root cellar, that's another story. We were a little disappointed that the temperature in the root cellar was only three degrees cooler than the larder. So right now, at the end of January, it's 54 degrees there in the root cellar. Up here in the larder, it's 57. The big difference right now is the humidity. It's 97 down in the root cellar, and it's in the 30s here. So we can use that to our advantage for certain vegetables like cooler, but a lower humidity. But you can see these pipes going down one of them goes to the far end of the root cellar, one goes to the close side. Unfortunately, we're going to have to have a powered solution because we can't have natural ventilation as they put the addition over the root cellar, the 1880 addition. So I think that's going to solve it. It's not finished yet, and I'm looking forward to the video myself to see how we finish it and fix it up. If our root cellar was in full operation, we'd have some of our root vegetables down there, but since it's not, we had to put the potatoes up here, which is not ideal. In fact, um, they're getting a little spongy, and see some of them have sprouted. So, not ideal situation for potatoes, but it is ideal for sweet potatoes. They like a lower uh, humidity than the potatoes. So these are in great shape, they're very firm, they're not sprouting, uh, in fact I think this could be dinner here the next night for both of us. And surprised, a little surprising is the spaghetti squash, and they, uh, one that would have liked a higher humidity, but they're holding up pretty well here in the lower humidity uh, larder. So we've got a handful of these left and they're in great shape. So. Um, I look forward to resolving issues in the root cellar and next year and showing you the full span of, of our vegetable produce storage. So now we showed you the old part of the house, the larder, how they would have stored things before and how we're doing it now. But we also have modern things, our freezers. You notice these, these are some ferns I'm trying to keep alive over the winter go on the front porch. So far so good, it's January. So we have two freezers in the basement. This one is all vegetables and fruits. This one's all meat, cheeses, nuts, and a few sort of things. And we also have one upstairs in the garage, don't it's we? It's full of soup and prepared things that I've made. 
So I'm, I'm still working on systems to organize it, but so far this is what works best. The top things are in bags. I have some beets, potatoes, O'Brien, a bunch of frozen fish, but you take the bag out. And those are all homemade, right? Yes, everything in here we grew, we froze. Um, but then you can lift out the, this thing and see what's underneath. We have a lot of frozen corn. Our corn did well this year. <laughs> we need to be eating more corn. But beets, frozen cucumber juice, frozen carrots, frozen pumpkin, frozen red peppers. Oh, and frozen uh, tomato paste. I did a bunch of tomato paste and did it in ice cube trays. So when I need just a little bit of tomato paste, I just puff one out, thaw it, and I'm ready to go. And this is what I'm looking forward to here. What's that? Frozen strawberries. Yeah. Well, we must have made most of it in the strawberry jam. Yeah. But even these cherries, they were off of our cherry bush. There's a ground cherry bush, I guess it's called. Sour, sour cherries. What does that make good cherry crisp? So, so far this system seems to be working. If you have a better suggestion, let me know. <laughs> I'm learning as I go. Now, this is our meats. Now, these meats we didn't grow this time. We did buy some beef from a friend of ours who raises cattle. But now, if you see in our last video, we're not raising cattle. So next year this time, that's going to be our beef. Yep. Family so family. we bought a quarter. Yeah, we bought a quarter. And we also bought some lamb. half a lamb. Yeah, so we have lamb in here, beef, sausages, chicken, all kinds of stuff. But like I said, a lot of it's not ours. So how do you decide when to put it in a bag or when to buy put it in these wire containers? Just what works best for me. Like ground beef, there's so much of it. So you just have it in a bag, pull it out, and see what's underneath. Okay. Now after we have the cattle slaughtered, there will be a lot more beef in here. So it'll be a lot more full than this. But it's working really well. And I am getting to the point I'm more organized. I have lists on every freezer and in the larder to show what I put in there. And then as we, any of us in the family, take something out, we're notating that we took it out. Because I want to do a thing next year and see how much we actually used. So I know, okay, I made too much of this, didn't make enough of this, like I didn't make enough blackberry syrup. So it'll give me an idea, you know, what we need for next year. These deep freezers can be a nightmare if it's not organized. We, how do we know that? Because <laughs> up until a couple weeks ago, they weren't organized. <laughs> <laughs> I had to come up with a system, but those wire racks are great. Walmart, perfect little wire racks to pull in and out so you can get to the stuff underneath. So I can show you the one in the garage too, and that's all soups and stuff. And I used a little bit different system, but still the bags. Now we're out of the basement, up in the main level, right off the garage in our mudroom. And this is our third freezer, the one that's filled with soups and stuff. But first, look at that beautiful bag of spinach. I still have spinach growing in the high tunnel, even though it's been three degrees at night. I have it in the high tunnel, a layer of fleece and a layer of plastic, and it is thriving. So we're gonna have spinach all winter long. Cool. Yeah, I'm excited. Now this freezer is full of soups, mostly, and prepared things that I've made. We have stuffed pepper soup. Um, Where are they? What is this bag soups right there? Yep, and this again, I'm using the bags. It works great. Now this is actually soup from 2020, so we're using this for the other ones down there, are 21. Ooh, 22. I see cookies in the yeah, middle. Yeah, there's cookies, they're new. But chicken corn You made soup. those, right? Oh yeah, I did. Okay. I think yeah, I make everything. <laughs> but I mean, every kind of soup you could imagine, which is great on these winter nights. I don't feel like making dinner. You just sit a soup out to thaw, go out in the high tunnel, pick a salad, and you have dinner. And there's mashed potatoes that I made, twice baked potatoes. I was trying to use up the potatoes because they were starting to sprout. You make twice baked potatoes, wrap them up, freeze them. When you want a nice dinner, have some meat, pop these out, thaw them, stick them in the mine oven for 400 for 25 minutes it's, it's wonderful i made like i don't know 30 40 of them. awesome yeah, looks like i'm gonna have to defrost that here when spring huh yeah it needs defrosted yeah that's your job <laughs> but i think we've done pretty well not wasting any food out of the garden absolutely so i hope you enjoyed our whirlwind tour of the uh food preservation i got fast because when i get excited <laughs> I talk fast, and I was very excited about this. I am enjoying this immensely. So, so overall, how do you think we did? I'm pretty tickled with how we did. Mm -hmm. The organization took a while to come in to figure out how to do it, because I've never done this. But um, I think we did well. Yeah. I think um, some things are going to change this year, though, because we should start getting fruit. Yes. Our fruit trees were only, like I said, three years old this year. So we're going to have some fruit coming. Yeah. I think the good thing is that our produce comes at different times doesn't come crushing all at once for example the strawberries that's a wave that's huge isn't that's it? intense 
Yeah. But we were really good. We didn't waste anything. What we did every day, we would pick them, pull the best ones out and sell them at the farm stand. And anything that was slightly blemished or just not perfect, we froze. So when I had probably 15 gallon bags of, of strawberries, started making strawberry jam. So you can stretch it out. Don't yeah. have to tend to them, right sell them, in. and do the preparation. Same with tomatoes. The best ones got sold, the rest got thrown in a bag and frozen. Then when I had time and we had enough accumulated, sauce, paste, all the other tomato things down there. The strawberries though hit a crunch over about three weeks. Yeah. The tomatoes really that the goes whole season. All summer. Yeah. Yeah. And then the corn, now we learned, um, we did a lot better this year on the corn. Uh, we had some staggered mm -hmm. planting. The first two plantings went really nice. The third one, the weather didn't help us. Um, we've also learned some different varieties of corn we're going to try this year. Bodacious was everybody's favorite. Yeah. <laughs> and we are learning varieties too, which tomatoes we like better, you know, all those things, mm -hmm. which, which are worth growing, which aren't worth growing. Which are best fresh and which ones are best yeah. you know, storing mm -hmm. and keeping over the mm -hmm. long term. Yeah. So, we have learned so much. Yeah. And yeah. then once we get the root cellar, the second, um, you know, revitalization of it, I think we'll be able to use it again next year. Yeah, I'm anxious to be able to actually keep stuff in my really cool looking root cellar. <laughs> That's one dream that still hasn't quite materialized completely yet, but it's almost there. Yeah. Good. Well, thank you for joining us on the Wardenburg Family Farm on our food, produce, storage. And if you have suggestions on better ways to do things or organize or preserve food, let me know. Um, and if you have any questions or want to see anything a little bit slower, let me know. I'd be happy to show you things better. But this is a very exciting thing I'm passionate about. So thanks for joining us. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.